Greetings all. This is Torical Scribeson. <sighs> Still in prison. Which is alright. It may have put a stop to my project of collecting stories from around the world of parody. But I've had the privilege of the kindest warden, Welksis. She had been giving me some delicious banquets and a story of her own. It had been a few days since last we talked about her tale. I was worried for Welksis. She seemed a bit sad as of late. I didn't push the issue, but I'd hoped to hear more about her amazing ancestor, Brigadier Boom Vroomberg. Welksis finally made the time for me, which was wonderful. She had a smile on her face, but there was a sadness beneath. I am ashamed to say that I really cared about getting my story. She was happy to tell me the last part of a tale. A group of gnome thugs were laid in his truck, while their leader harassed the older couple that ran. This is what happens when you don't pay your dues. Mrs. Pipe tried to shield her husband from the gnome thugs, and stood up and received a punch to the face for his bravery. Please, don't do this. You must understand that business has been slow. We aren't making much. The gnome thug leader sneered. That's not my problem. I mean, it kind of is. The gnome thug leader glared at Mrs. Pipe. You smartened off to me. The gnome thug leader raised his hand to backhand Mrs. Pipe. The old shopkeeper braced for impact. But was surprised that the impact never came. She opened her eyes to see the gnome thug leader staring blankly at her. Uh, sir? The gnome thug leader fell to the floor, revealing the dagger in the back of his head. Mrs. Pipe looked around frantically. What the? <gasps> Mrs. Pipe looked around to find the other thugs laying dead on the floor as the gnome woman in a sleek black suit with a masquerade mask standing over them. You're safe now, madam. Mrs. Pipe stared at her hero in shock, then started screaming. Oh, 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 oh. The brigadier cringed. Mm, yes, I'll show myself out then. Petunia Piston, a.k.a. Brigadier Boom Vroomberg, had been cleaning up the city. She had received training from a constable undercover agent named Thrake in surveillance and other constable skills to help her be a better cleaner. She had dealt with various lolas and ne'er-do-wells. She had stopped many a criminal and prevented many emergencies. She was about to face her greatest trial. Petunia waited at the cafe where she had abandoned her friend, Eliza, to investigate a strange goblin that ended up being Thrake, and she ended up ruining his investigations and gaining the ire of the crime lord, Kandig Vaya. Petunia was very tense. Eliza could be a handful when she was angry. She was surprised to see Eliza wheeling up in her chair. With Thrake pushing her chair. What the? Petunia, Thrake, and Eliza sat in silence. Petunia didn't know how long it lasted, but she knew she couldn't stand it anymore. <sighs> all right, all right. I'm sorry. She had a sly smile on her face. Sorry for what? Petunia glared angrily at Eliza. You know. Eliza leaned in towards Petunia. I want to hear you say it. Petunia turned her head away. <laughs> Eliza shrugged. That's fine. I can wait. I don't abandon my friends. Unlike some people. Petunia jumped to her feet and stormed off. This was a bad idea. Eliza shouted at Petunia. Go ahead. Leave. It's what you're good at. Eliza crossed her arms over her chest in anger. She looked towards Drake, who glared at Horam. 
Go talk to her. Thread continued to glare at her eyes. <sighs> Please. Thread nodded, stood up, and walked off. Petunia stormed down a street with other gnomes hustling and bustling about, doing her best and failing to hold back her tears. <laughs> Petunia! Petunia stopped in her tracks. She wiped her eyes as best she could and turned to face Thrake, who was running towards her. I know, I know. Thrake stopped catch his breath. Good, Mama. Glad I ran obey. Sorry, Thrake. She's just so... Stubborn. Petunia nodded. Walk of friends. Petunia glared at Thrake. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you should apologize, love. Petunia gave Thrake a confused look. Why do I have to care so much? I just... You know... Think you shouldn't do what you do. I know. That's all. Petunia stared at Thrake in confusion. Then realization hit her. Wait, you! Eliza? You're... Petunia put two of her fingers together. Thrake looked away, embarrassed. <gasps> no. When? Remember when I met? Oh, that long ago. Thrake looked annoyed. She is a lovely lady. Not quite the catch I have, you know. Besides, I don't even know I'll have a life outside of you at work. Petunia glared at Thrake. No, you don't. Thrake and Petunia stared at each other, then broke into laughter. <laughs> Come on, you have an apology to me. <sighs> I guess you're right. She is the reason I do what I do. Thrake and Petunia returned to the cafe, where a server was waiting for them. Excuse me, are you Madame Petunia? Petunia looked puzzled. Yes? The server handed Petunia a note. I was told to give this to you. Petunia opened the note tentatively. Uh, thank, thank you? Petunia read the note and air escaped from her. Oh my god! Petunia ran off to the surprise of Thrake and the server. Petunia, what's going on? Thrake ran after Petunia, leaving the server confused. Am I not getting a tip? Petunia found her way to the table. She found Eliza's chair, but no Eliza. Oh God, no! Thrake caught up. Will you stop all that running? Petunia turned to look at Thrake. They took her! Thrake stared at Petunia in shock. What? Petunia handed Thrake the note. He read it. Dear Brigadier Brown Boomba, or shall I say, Petunia Piston. That's right. We know who you are. Sincerely, Caddy Fire. Thrake crumpled up the note. Damn it! Petunia and Thrake made their way to Petunia's hidey hole, where Petunia mixed some chemicals, while Thrake paced the floor, reading and rereading the note. Petunia was getting annoyed. Read it all you like, but it won't say anything different. Thrake glared at Petunia. I'm not just reading it. Cutting it. Same thing. Most certainly not. I'll have you know that I discern a lot of this piece of paper. Is that right? Let me demonstrate. The feel to this paper is soft and thin, but durable, which narrows down to three paper-making companies. 
and it's bought as a smell, there's a hint of salt water, so it's by the river that leads out of the mountain and into the ocean. It's on your throat. Which means... Thrake wagged his finger at it, can you? Don't get ahead of me. Anyway, colour tone of this note is cool. Which I know for a fact they don't make it anymore, which would lead me to believe this came from the abandoned white leaf paper factory by the docks in the south side of town. Thrake handed Petunia the paper with a smug look on his face. Petunia snatched the note out of his hand and looked at it. She glared at Thrake. I'm sure the stamp on the back helped. Thrake sneered. At the abandoned factory, several gnome, goblin, and kobold thugs controlled the area. Petunia and Thrake hid behind a crate on the dock, surveying the paper factory. Indeed. Petunia opened her coat to reveal a plethora of daggers. I've been dying to. Two cobalt thug guards patrolled the east side of the factory. They stopped as a dagger embedded itself between them. The cobalt thugs looked at it in confusion. Huh? The dagger suddenly sprayed a greenness. The two cobalt thug guards lost consciousness. Two goblin thug guards patrolled the west end of the factory. When a dagger sailed through the air and embedded itself into a goblin thug guard's chest, causing him to fall to his death. The other goblin thug guard stared down at his dead companion in shock. What the? The dagger shot dart into the other goblin thug guard's neck, which injected a burning venom into the guard thug, killing him instantly. Two gnome thug guards patrolled the north side of the paper factory and stopped as one of them saw the dagger fly through the air. The two gnome thug guards nearly dodged the dagger which embedded itself into the wall. The two gnome thug guards looked back at the dagger, where it came from, and saw a brigadier Vroom Vroom Bird standing before them. Nice throw, love. Yeah, you need to work on your aim, sweetheart. The brigadier smirked. Is that so? The dagger fired bolts of electricity into the gnome thug guards. The gnome thug guards fell to the ground. Kalik Vile paced before Eliza, who was tied to a chair, while several kobold, goblin, and gnome thug guards guarded her. She glared at Kalik. You feel like a man, do you? You and all these. Eliza looked around at the thugs in disgust. Men needing to guard the poor disabled girl. Oh, so strong. Pathetic. Eliza spat. But her projectile fell short. Kaelig looked at the spittle on the floor. He brought his head up to look at his captive and smile. Sweetheart, could you stop shouting? You're hurting my feelings. Kaelig rolled his eyes. Brigadier better get here soon. <laughs> Two goblin thug guards stood How about you untie me and I'll show you what I can hurt? I don't like how quiet it is. The other goblin thug guard shrugged. Maybe there's no danger. A dagger entered the chest of the other goblin thug guard. Looked down at the dagger and then to his compatriot. Never mind. The surviving goblin thug guard looked down in a panic. Oh, shit. Before he could complete his sentence and take action. A dagger found its way into his chest. He joined his compatriot in death. Petunia and Thrake ran up to the door. That should be the last of them. On the outside. Oh, I would appreciate more positivity. <laughs> you don't want a wrong guy, love. Petunia and Thrake ran through the factory. Mm, I hope she's okay. 
Petunia and Thrake ran into a room where they found Eliza tied to a chair with a rope around her mouth. Petunia was excited to see her friend. <gasps> Eliza! Petunia ran to Eliza. Thrake tried to stop her. Wait! But Petunia was already removing Eliza's gag. Oh, I'm glad you're all right. As soon as the gag was out of Eliza's mouth, she shouted. It's a trap! As if on cue, Goblin, Kobold, and Gnome Thugs jumped out of the shadows. Thank you, Miss Eliza. But I think she gathered that much. Thrake tried to disappear into the shadows, but felt the tip of a crossbow in his back. A Gnome Thug chuckled in his ear. Where are you going, buddy? Kaelic smirked at Thrake. So glad you could join us, Thrake. Or should I say, Constable. Thrake sneered at Caleb. I prefer you don't call me at all, mate. Hmm. Quaint. Caleb turned his attention back to the Brigadier. I should thank you, Brigadier. Or would you prefer Petunia? Eliza looked toward the Brigadier in shock. Petunia? Petunia laughed nervously as she put Eliza's gag back on. The <laughs> I think you need this back. Don't you dare! <laughs> anyway, I have to thank you, Petunia, because of your interference. When you killed the other crime lords, I acquired more real estate. You're welcome. I guess you can show your appreciation by letting us go. Cute, but sadly, no. You've become a liability and must be dealt with. Petunia sneered. Well, that's a fine, you're welcome. I'll tell you what, as a thank you, I'll grant you an expedient death. Petunia sneered. Oh, thanks. Kaelic shrugged. You brought this on yourself, Brigadier. Petunia hung her head in shame. Oh, you're right. I guess I shouldn't have come here without a plan. I guess I... Petunia shake and smiled. Drop the ball. Thrake nodded. Caleb was confused. Huh? Thrake reached into his coat and pulled out two balls and threw them against the ground. <laughs> Caleb and his men choked on the smoke. As it cleared, he saw that the brigadier, Thrake, and Eliza were gone. The gnome thug guarding Thrake laid on the ground unconscious. Kellig glared at his men. <sighs> Don't just stand there, find them! Petunia and Thrake ran down a hallway. Thrake had Eliza on his back. Thrake undid Eliza's gay. What's going on? Why do those men take me? How is Petunia the brigadier? What? Petunia shook her head. You shouldn't have took that off. Thugs ran down the hallway. Thrake looked behind and then to Petunia. We, uh, better pick up the pipe, Thugs. Run! We should fight! Don't think that would be a good idea. Why not? We can take them? First off, no. Second off, we don't want to be here for the surprise we left them. Surprise? The thugs continued to run after the escapees until the two thugs heard a ticking sound, which made them stop. What's that? The other thug shrugged. Beats me. Both thugs investigate the, the noise to find a box with a crude clock attached on it. There were several wires coming out of it. Boom! The bomb exploded. Drake looked back to see a ball of fire chasing after him and his compatriots. Run faster! What? Eliza looked back to see the same ball following her and her compatriots. She shouted in Petunia's ear. Run faster! Thrake and Petunia jumped through windows as the abandoned factory exploded. They landed 
in the water. Thrake, Petunia, and Eliza sat in the brigadier's hidey hole, chatting. <laughs> <laughs> it had been a few years since the brigadier's first mission, and they were waxing nostalgic. Do you remember how long it took us to dry off? Indeed. Good thing we found you that wheelbarrow. Oh, good for you. You didn't have to ride in it. Do you know how undignified it is to ride in a wheelbarrow? Like a pile of dirt? <laughs> <laughs> Thrake put his arm around Eliza. That reminds me. Our uh, anniversary is coming up. <gasps> Did I hear right? My husband remembered an anniversary. Thrake sneered. It's odd to forget when there's an egg in your ear. <laughs> you idiot! Eliza playfully pushed Thrake, but the two shared a kiss. Petunia looked disgusted by the sight. What do you have to do then? I just ate. An alarm sounded, <laughs> interrupting the fun. Same someone needs the brigadier. Ah. A group of known thugs surrounded a young cubby cub dish a dagger at them. Give us all your valuables, no one gets hurt. The gnome boy stood in front of his gnome group. Please take what you want, but don't hurt her! <laughs> Look here, fellas. A hero. The gnome girl pointed towards something above. Speaking of which... The gnome thug leader looked up in confusion. Huh? The gnome thugs looked up in horror. <sighs> as Brigadier Boom Vroom Berg stood on top of a building overlooking the scene. Hey. Hey, are you harassing this couple? The gnome thrug leader shook his head in disbelief. Oh, hell. The brigadier leapt from the top of the building and started dispensing justice. Wilkes had finished her tale. She said that there was more, but she couldn't finish in the short time we had together. I was perplexed by what she meant, but she had left my cell before I could inquire more. I thought nothing of it. I was just going to wait in anticipation for the next story. Not much else I could do. Interesting turn of events. Wilkes informed me that she was forced to retire this morning. She came to me because she thought my mission was too important to end, so she decided to help me leave. This was a wonderful... Quiet. Someone would hear us. Oh, sorry. We had made it to the flybox port. I'm attempting to get into a flybox. Hey, what are you doing? Oh no, Wexus, we've been caught. Get in the damn flybox already. Come on. I can't. What? My old adventuring days are behind me, love. I'm far too old. But... Stop right there! Get out of that fly box. Goodbye. Oh, damn it! Not again!